I want to talk about the quarter in markets, but just coming off of uh, the interview with Waters, of course, there's Ocasio-Cortez, Elizabeth Warren on Kramer's show last night. How much do you think policy from the Dems is going to drive trading this year? Well, look, the tax, the tax uh, rhetoric that we're going to hear, first of all, income inequality is, is, a, is an issue, and it's an issue that we need to deal with. Uh, many people say you need to grow the pie instead of taxing the pie. But uh, the fact is, is that it's a, it's a hot political issue. And so when you hear Elizabeth Warren, uh, you know, taxing assets or progressive rates, uh, it's going to get a lot of traction, politically speaking. Economically speaking, yeah. my, you know, I'm not quite so sure how much any of this really is going to do. Right. Is it a, is it a liability for shares of financial uh, companies, at, at least just the, um, the optics of hearings that the House may hold this year? It's a discussion we have to have, so I, I, don't, I don't see any uh, real downside. I, I think that we're, we're going to have a uh, healthy discussion, but I believe that you have to look through the political rhetoric of, uh, you know, running for president, and it's very populist. But we'll look at, uh, I think we have to have a, have a good discussion on this issue. I mean, our deficits need to be dealt with. Ron, I want to go back to the point you just made about from an economic standpoint, you're not so sure how much these, you know, tax proposals would actually do if they were enacted. Why? I ask that because I know you're in the business of wealth management. It's a growing business for Stiefel. What do you, what have you seen in terms of these types of tax policies in the past and how they've played out? Well, I think government revenue seems to, over history, seems to be capped at, you know, 30 percent of GDP, even when tax rates were 90 percent. And so I think there's a lot of ways to, to deal with taxation. Uh, you know, the, the, the real answer is if you're going to really look at tax reform, and no one wants to hear this, but I'm not running for president, so I'll say it, you know, there'll be some <laughs> kind of a VAT or a sales tax. Uh, that'll be, everyone will say, oh, that's regressive, and I understand that. But I think just raising the marginal rate, sure, it'll raise some taxes, but it's not going to deal with our real problem, which is, you know, Huge deficits. Uh, I don't see that working. And I, in, in Elizabeth Warren's proposal, great soundbite, sounds great, not constitutional, I don't think. I don't think you can tax uh, direct taxes of ownership. I just yeah. don't think that's allowed. Ron, how do you address income inequality then? You say it's important to address. I hear a lot from the investor class about how not to tax, but not a lot about specifically how to address income inequality in a way uh, that would be good for the economy. How do you do it? Well, I mean, look, it's a great question. I wish I, if I did have the answer for that, I probably would be president, okay? So I don't have the answer for that. <laughs> but I do believe that we need to rate, to grow the economic pie. And I do think that there can be a fair distribution of, of the wealth. I, I think the real problem today is in many, many ways, technology, and I'm not blaming technology, but technology is eliminating jobs and it's, it's concentrating wealth in the people that great, create great technology but doesn't necessarily distribute it through wages. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a valid debate, one that we have to have as a, as a country. Unfortunately, politics is going to make it uh, a little bit more cloudy to see the real answer. Hey, Ron, um, we're going to talk about the quarter in your outlook, but we got a pretty accommodative Fed all of a sudden. Earnings are looking okay. Uh, we got trade talks that were not derailed by this visit to D.C. this week. Uh, do you think the pain trade is higher from here? Look, I think, well, look what the Fed's done. For the first time in 10 years, we have real interest rates. And what that means for the markets is that I think we're having a P.E. that is 16 to 17 times. We've got a cap on P.E.s because interest rates are now positive, positive real rates. So if you think earnings are going to be, you know, what's the consensus, dollar uh, 168, that says a uh, 2700 to 2850. What we need to drive by that is global synchronized growth, and I think trade is an important consideration. We've got to get these trade accords so that the rest of the world can catch up with the United States. And I think as, and that is one of the things that's holding the Fed back. I don't think the Fed can be raising rates into an environment where the rest of the world is not. Ron, I'm looking at shares of Stiefel right now, up almost 6% on the heels of your company's earnings uh, this morning. We also got that gangbusters jobs report 
What is your take on the U.S. economy and I guess also on the global economy right now? I think the U.S. economy is in, is in solid shape. I think you look at this uh, a very good jobs report. I was encouraged by the, product, uh, by the uh, participation rate. Uh, and I, I think what you have to look at in terms of this jobs report is watch productivity. I, I believe that's what the Fed will look at because we need investment to increase productivity to keep inflation tame. And so, uh, but if, if, if we have investment uh, on this, I think that uh, the economy's in good shape. The rest of the world, I'm not so sure right now. And I think that that is a, a consideration for the U.S. markets. So what does all of that mean We get to talk about my Stiefel earnings at all? I mean, I... Yeah. That, you know, so what like, does it mean for yeah, Stiefel well, look, in 2019? Well, it's going to... I Look, we just had our 23rd straight year of record revenue. I, I'll bet you Carl wasn't even out of high school when we started this. So uh, it, 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 it was a... Uh, it's 23 years, and, uh, and I, I'm pleased uh, with our record results. And as I look forward, I don't see a recession in 2019. I see the Fed... Uh, tapping down. I don't really see rate increase. Uh, uh, so let's let's get through all this government shutdown stuff and let's get going on uh, on you know building and continuing to build. And I think we'll have a good uh, market. Remember, eight January, by the way, we had the best January since '87, but that followed the worst December since the '30s. So I sort I kind of <laughs> think those balanced each other out.